So start of the match, I am going to fish shallow. I'm going to fish three and a half foot deep to start with. I'm going to use a 0.3 T-nut slapper float with four number eight starts directly underneath the float and I can adjust that accordingly. No shots or starts down the line. I'm just going to let the pellet do all the work. So there we are, fish on, first bite, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It was a really good bite, you couldn't really miss it. That tells me the fish are shallow, they're happy to be there and they're ready to munch so hopefully we can get some weight built up pretty quick. That's a big fish for in here. That's a big fish for in here. Massive. What do you think they're that big in here? <laughs> yeah. So I've had that out on the MAP Hybrid 12 to 14 elastic. I don't keep it in for very long. I do end up swapping to a grey hydro. But did the job. As you can see, that was a really good sized fish. Probably the biggest I've ever had out of here. So we didn't have to wait long at all for that bite. I'm constantly feeding all the time. That is to encourage the fish to be more competitive, become shallower and hopefully increase the bite rate. So it's a nice two and a half to three pound fish. That is the standard I have come to expect in San Martin. That is your average fish. So I'm happy with that. Very shallow way. Last bite. Miss it when shallow. So that was all live, it wasn't a long wait and well ever, I'm only waiting that amount of time, I know I'm in the right area and I know what I'm doing is still the right thing to do. Now you did see me looking towards the left hand side a couple of times, that's because I keep hearing the reeds moving, I'm seeing the odd bush moving towards the edge of the pond. I do have a rod set up and I do have them set up for those lines. So I'm kind of debating, is this still right or should I be throwing into the corners or throwing towards the edges? But whenever I'm catching fish like this, I'm definitely going to stay on it. Now you may remember the last video I did on here was the rod only match. It was a few days after it had been opened. 
when it had had KHV. So to see these fish, good sized fish in really perfect condition, really does make my heart smile. I'm so glad for Sam Martin that it wasn't annihilated and a lot of fish have survived. They are healthy and they're fighting like hell. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up. The likes really do make a difference to my videos. And if you haven't subscribed, why not? It's completely free and I don't want you to miss any of my future videos. Thank you. So this is your worst nightmare. The line has gone around the pole and it's not releasing the elastic. Now these fish do fight really hard, I'm in a bit of a panic here. I mean the uplink should break before the pole does but I really want to get this fish out as well. So I'm just trying my luck here, trying to pull it back as much as I can and I've got luck here. It's always the little fish that cause all the problems. However, I'm quite lucky it weren't a much bigger fish because then I would have had some real problems. However, I've got it out, happy days. Being in peg fur, eh? a corner peg, it's usually you know a great thing in the summer this peg is mega I would have ran to it but it's still a bit cold it's obviously the water's not warmed up enough yet so I'm not in a great area so I know I've got to really explore this peg to get any kind of weight out of it so I'm really happy I'm catching these fish shallow because that's always been a great way of building big nets for me I know it's not gonna last the whole match but so far I'm getting some really good quality fish. Before the match had started, I always like to stand on my platform and have a look, just look around the peg and see where I think I can find fish. Whether it be a margin, a corner, you know, middle of lake, that kind of thing. So the, the plan I'd set for myself is slapping at 13 and a half meters or 13 meters rod to the middle there's a bush at the middle of the edge which we'll see in a bit and also dobbing some bread in the corner and margin that there were the areas i've said to myself where i think i can really find some fish so this is step one you know take advantage of this as much as i can and then we'll see how step two three and four went looking around the lake I feel like I'm really up there with the anglers that are catching the most at this point uh, there's quite a few anglers that are catching on the deck you know where they can it is a windy day that has made presentation really difficult being in the corner area I'm just missing the real brunt of that wind and that's allowing me to slap and catch these fish further down the lake they would have no chance of doing this kind of fishing, it's just far too windy. That's another really good take and the weight is really starting to build now. I'm, I'm getting towards that 20, 30 pound mark, which I'm really happy with. I think I was averaging 13, 14 pound per hour. So doing the math, I thought that's not actually that bad. 
I thought maybe a, you know 70 to 90 pound might win it today so that would get me there or thereabouts but that is based on me catching shallow at some point this is going to die down or stop and that's why you have to explore the other parts of your peg but so far I am on target on where I want to be The rain has just started to kick in, making a miserable day even more miserable. However, you know how much I love shallow fishing, so I can't not be happy right now. It's absolutely freezing. I'm going to be wetter than an otter's pocket, but I'm, I'm loving it. I, I am absolutely loving this. It feels so good. Obviously, winter's start, well, winter's finished now, it's spring. But it feels like that too, it feels like the fish are starting to move about and start feeding and have a chew now. And as a fisherman that's fished all the way through winter, I cannot tell you how good it feels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that line and I'm going to start going out on the rod towards that bush in the middle. I've been eyeing it up for ages and when I've fished on this lake before it is an area I've thrown to and I've had good results. Put the feeder right near it, that's perfect. Let's see how we get on. fish on that's exactly what we want it's what I expected when you get tight up there there's always fish there they're not usually big fish though um, I weren't expecting to be any larger than the fish I've caught shallow but it's about keeping that net ticking and just catch as much as you can Right near barely. Two pound bob. So that's another accurate throw. I'm really happy where that's gone. Very similar area to the last throw. Confident that's going to get me a bite. <laughs> so it weren't a massive pull round but that tip started moving it's on fish on now you saw there where it said four minute wait time maximum so i have to stop watch on this bite went after about two minutes and so did the first one and that's why i only leave it for a maximum of four minutes if it's not gone in four minutes keep throwing it out and that's how you keep baiting an area and encourage fish into that area as well and get more bites and get more fish. Happy with that fish but they're not as big as I'd like them to be so it's time to try something else. 
I've been eyeing up that corner. Loads of reeds there. Got to be some fish knocking around tight up. Nothing better than a dobbing rig for that. So a teen up dobber, 0.2 self weighted. No shot required. I can move it as shallow, as deep as I like, without hurting the line at all. As predicted, there were fish in that area. There had to be. You know, there's going to be fish to just live there. What I'm doing is, I've got about five feet of line, and my flow is probably a foot to a foot and a half deep. I've got the two discs of eight mud bread on the hook, and I'm just swinging it out. So beyond my pole and towards those reeds. Now, the advantage of that is that my pole is away from the fish so my pole's not going to scare them at all there's nothing for them to see it's at least four feet away from the fish and they're going to be encouraged to go near that floor and that bait because there's nothing you know over them there's nothing to spook them and you can get quality fish like this So that is a much bigger fish than the two I just had on the rod. That is why dobbing can be lethal. If there is any big fish knocking around any reeds, two big pieces of bread crushed together, dobbing it in, are definitely going to find them. So you've seen that live, no editing required. How quick was that? From when that bait hit that water, it must have been less than four seconds. Fish on. So we waited a bit longer for that bite, but the bite still came. It's still an area where there's a group of fish knocking about. Now the fish are getting a little bit smaller, and I don't want them to get too small, because this is no good. There's better ways of catching smaller fish. So I'm going to try going down the margin. No, That's where I'm expecting some better down. fish to be. It's getting towards that time of day now, last two hours. I really need to get some more weight on that board if I'm going to compete. So this is the margin setup, 0.4 Tino Alien Flow, it's wire stem, it's going to hold amazingly well in this windy weather, four number eight bulk shot about a foot away from the hook and one number ten in between the hook and the bulk. So I've got a little CAD cup on the end of the top kit, I'm going to put in 10 to 15 four mil pellets and I've got single cone on the hook. And that is it. 
I've not pre baited or anything like that through the match. I'm just assuming that this fish that live there, those pellets will get them to investigate it to see a big bright yellow bait and hopefully put it in the mouth. So that was a pretty small carp, but edge fishing is going to be quicker than the other methods that I've done, and hopefully you do have that opportunity of something bigger coming along. Edges and margins are notorious for big fish. So straight away that is a better fish. Now in this margin I am on a 14 hook. I like a 14 when I'm using corn. Plus it gives me the opportunity to switch to a load of maggots if I wanted to. You know plenty of other baits. A big soft bait. Double worm. There's so many options a 14 hook will give you without being over the top. I'm on a good bottom. I think I'm on a 6 pound hook link. So it's not going to get broken. This is a 12 to 14 elastic. I'm really happy with the balance. And yeah, that is pretty much what a lot of fishing is about. Just get your balance right. Get you up more suited for your bait. And, you know, the fishing will do the rest. You what, mate? You what? No, I won't say bagging, they're not very big. <laughs> so that's Steve to my right asking if I'm bagging. Um, that's the term that we use when they think you're catching excessively or regular. And I said to him, I wouldn't say bagging, they're not very big. So I am catching regular, but I do need them to be bigger than this if I want to compete. Because there's much better pegs than this, this time of year on this, on this pond. So you could also see there that the fish was trying to get into the corner and snag me and break my line. So I just pulled the pole really high and that redirects them out and that's exactly what happened. When you fish near reeds, brambles, trees, whatever, you're always going to attract a big fish there because they know they can get off, that's why they live there. So you need to make sure that you're switched on, be quick to move if you have to, and don't be afraid to stick your pole up in the air because it does actually work. That's what we want. That's what we want. Fish. Yeah, pal. So that is probably my biggest fish of the day so far. That explains why I tried to go cycle on me and get into the corner. They're not that.
So that is another banger exactly what I need. Time of day plus the area you're in definitely equals better quality fish. That was a really nice bite, it swam out beautifully. Why can't they all do that? Eh? This is living the dream right now. You literally heard the words come right out of my good, mouth. Good That's a good fish. That's three really good fish on the trot. So we've got another psychopath trying to get into the reeds. That's why you just see me pull the pole eye up to redirect him out. Once they go into that open water, it's game over.
now that is a cracking fish to end on beautiful condition really enjoyed that margin fishing really enjoyed the fishing full stop but let's see how we got on No, I've I've done yeah, it today. Get caught. Yeah. Well done, Father. Oh, the next time I'll come in. oh, it's a deep one, this one, Sam Martin, yeah. I was in to tell you. 14 eight. Don't tell me no. Oh, it's, well, there's a lot more water in it than yes, usual and all. That's all right. You don't tell you. <laughs> it's off again every time, every week. Every got time. Got his 50 metre badge, you want to wait this bag? I'm from Gut Ram Bar. Gallery. Now you've been fishing side, Danny. Big crane, guys. 14 12. Nick didn't seem to be a lot. I didn't seem to be. Oh, Nikolai, no, I might have done Nikolai today, I think. Oh, yeah, there, yeah. Rod out. Yeah. I think you should have took them off of the rear. 42.15. Fifty-seven eleven. Come is bagged up today. I've had uh, two or three cracking ones. Thirty pounds seven. I think he's done me today, you know. Come on today, pal. Forty pound three. Yeah, I don't. I don't Ooh, think I've got seventy pound for me. I don't think I've got 70, I had 67 on the quickest. 70, 70 pound, 10. <laughs> oh, it could be closer. And I think these fish are a bit smaller than what I think, so... Well, right, come on, we're 30. Where Somebody told me there were no hard left in here. You've done this before, Bill. No. <laughs> well done. Is that on? Yeah. Well done. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Net violation, Gary Hazelwood. Oh wow. Bailiff at Springvale. <laughs> Net violation. Seven one. Ninety-two one. You've had well over hundred pound then. Yeah. They're only thirty-one hard in that net. They're about two pound a chuck though, aren't they? Well I'll go in some like two and some about one. <laughs> Three ways. We'll give him seven pound for that one. I had one fish in the last half hour. Uh, that That's a, it's a close one. It is a close one. Three violations, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
40 pound nine. Well done, you can lie. Jiggy. What's done me and Tommy today, mate, for it not go on? Get in. And everybody's doing that last <laughs> one. Man. He's beat Tommy. Yeah. He's beat Tommy. Them first. Twenty two nine. And he got he went over on a net in with ninety two. Andy? Yeah, that wind's been a wonder. 42 8. I thought you'd got more than that. I was trying to help the art there, that I got more. I thought you'd got more than that. <laughs> 44 7. Nikolai. 86.15. You smack Nikolai up. Yeah. Nick had 82.5. We aren't mag it, Andy. I don't mag it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I fish corn that as well. Did you feed corn or pellet? Corn mushrooms. Yeah. Not much corn though, only about three or four pieces. Yeah. 34, 15. I never... I don't know why. I don't know why they're right, have you? They're nice eyes, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. 26, 2. Sixty-one, one. He don't lie, he said 60 pound. No. Go on, Peggy Levin, that silver. guy there with silver van. Nice skimmers and all. All eyes. All right. Oh, he had some carp. One or two carp. Is that skimmers at all? 29.3. Listen to this fishery <laughs> How he talks to his pussy. <laughs> Is that all you had after you put that other net in? Yeah. You did say it the other day, didn't you? Yep. That was quite a while to go and all, weren't it? That was, uh, that was yeah, Papa died last half hour, didn't it? Yeah. Two pound nine. Them, them little ones, yeah. Like yeah. That's what we're in there, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Look at them heads. Nice yeah, right, right. Thought they moved bloody first hour and a half. Yeah. Huh? 38.14. Oh, I've got on Maggot and to the white on on pallet. I thought 41. we were nesting because I was fishing short. I got a fish. 41.7. Red didn't work, did it? Yeah, I caught Dobbin yeah. over there. That one's got a bed for ages. Yeah, I caught Dobbin, I had five out. More. Yeah, we know that. Thirty pound. Looking very net violation, eh? I think my clicker said about forty-three for that. Yeah, I mean, all in good condition and all, right now. Fifty pound seven. Ooh, I've got it. No. Nice size, aren't they? They've been good. They usually they're small on this way, but I think they've been decent size. Twenty-seven two. Oh no. 
It's your statement. Seventy-seven nine. I did tell me though. Seventy-seven nine in the Oh no. <laughs> and there we have it. The results are in. So Tommy has managed to get the win in his section. Absolutely fantastic. You've got Nikolai, he's won his section. And we've also got me. I won my section. So all three of us claiming a section win. I'm absolutely buzzing with that weight of 77 pound nine ounces off that peg today. As always, a massive thank you to my international fans. And as always, the Netherlands are top of the tree. Thank you so much. And 4.6% from the ladies, it really does mean a lot. Thank you so much. If you would like to use any of the floats that you see in any of my videos, go onto Facebook, like this page, I'll approve it. We post daily, £1.35 per float. Don't miss out on a bargain. And that is it for another video. I hope you've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed making it, loved taking part in the fishing obviously. Could be lots more videos this summer, really don't want you to miss any, so please hit that subscribe button, and until next time, tight lines and sithy. Up the tea nooks. <laughs>